Okay, we have a material which is in the shape of a quarter annular disc and we see the dimensions of this uh, material. Um, geometrically is the uh, one quarter of a annular uh, conductor or a material which has this uh, inner radius from uh, from the center to the face B as um, small b and from the uh, center to face A it has the radius small a. And we are interested in to find the resistance between the face D and face E. So the current flows in this direction or the other way. And we want to find the resistance in terms of the uh, dimensions of this material. When you look at uh, carefully, we can think this uh, quarter uh, annular disk as the uh, s slices of quarter rings, which is in this shape, which are parallelly added from face B to face A. Let's picture these um, quarter rings. So the thickness of the slab in this direction is T is given and it's the same on all everywhere every point on the material so the thickness is T for this uh, quarter ring but the lateral dimension of this the cross section the uh, lateral dimension of the cross section of this ring is we call as DR because these uh, rings are um, changing from uh, uh, the center to the outer uh, face in the radial direction so just that's why we call these lateral dimension as dr infinitesimally uh, small uh, thickness in in the lateral uh, dimension so we can think uh, this disc quarter disc as let uh, as the parallelly uh, added uh, quarter rings of this shape of course, the radius of these rings are changing from B to A. When you add them parallelly, uh, the radii will change from B to A. So this is the shape. And we add these rings of different uh, radii uh, uh, in the parallel direction, in the, uh, in the, in the radial direction. We, we add them parallelly. So we, we are interested in finding the resistance from this side to that side. So you can think of these rings as parallelly connected resistances. Then to find the equivalent resistance, we will use the um, expression for the parallel addition of resistances. So you can think these as um, resistors of uh, different la lengths, of course, since they are, they have uh, all different uh, radii, and uh, they will have different uh, lengths from from this side, so let's say from D to E, they are connected parallelly. So the equivalent resistance, of course, for this will be uh, uh, the inverse of the equivalent resistance will be equal to the sum of all inverse resistances of these um, conductors or uh, materials. Well, the question is, how can we uh, then proceed uh, to find this uh, inverse resistance? So the inverse resistance is, since the inverse resistance is some of these uh, parallelly connected uh, resistances, but we these um, resistances are uh, added continuously. That means we don't have uh, the uh, finite discrete uh, resistances of the different uh, size Ls, but they are in fact, uh, changing continuously, so this sum will be, as you can guess, will be in the, sh in, in, in the form of integral. So what we calculate, in fact, we will express uh, one of these uh, uh, inverse resistance of quarter rings as infinitesimal inverse resistance, and then we will take the integral from r is equal to b to a if we can express the uh, uh, resistance of each of these quarter rings as the variable r which is the radius of this quarter ring then we will be able to take the integral so let's concentrate now on this 
uh, infinitesimal inverse resistance d1 over r and of course the equivalent inf infinitesimal inverse resistance will be the sum of these uh, infinitesimal inverse resistances and this will be integral because they are changing continuously so let's express um, with these uh, parameters given for this uh, slice of um, uh, quarter ring uh, it express uh, the uh, uh, real resistance then the general expression for the resistance is just the uh, resistivity of the material rho uh, times the length of the resistor from this side to this uh, divided by the cross section area so the length if you take this uh, r as the radius of the quarter ring then this length from this side to that will be 2 pi r divided by 4 it's the it's uh, the quarter of a, a circumference of a, a ring of radius r and the cross section area is simply since it's a rectangular region and the cross section does not change along uh, this direction it will be t times dr well it seems that the cross section area is changing because we are using dr but dr is not changing when you go along this direction okay but the thing is we will take the inverse of this anyway uh, because we cannot take in, in the integral of this kind of expression where the integration variable uh, dr uh, is in the denominator of a, a expression so but anyway we need the inverse of inverse resistance so uh, we are okay to express this uh, inverse resistance Ch just take the inverse of this uh, expression 1 over rho uh, times 2 divided by pi times r and the thickness t times dr so the rest in fact is easy uh, since we are already expressed this uh, inverse infinitesimal resistance infinitesimal inverse resistance then the rest is to find the total inverse uh, uh, or equivalent inverse resistance as the integration of this uh, inverse the infinitesimal resistances well what about the um, of course the limits of the integration the limits of the integration since the variable is r and r is the radius of these slice of quarter rings so it will change from r is equal to b to r is equal to a so Taking this integral is very easy, and the result is just 2 times the thickness of the slab material divided by pi rho times the natural logarithm a divided by b. But this is uh, the inverse of the equivalent resistance, so the real resistance, to find the real resistance, just take the inverse of this quantity, and it is nothing but the resistivity of the material rho times pi divided by 2 t natural logarithm a divided b let's check okay let's check this uh, when a is equal to uh, almost b that means uh, we are thinking of very uh, infinitesimal thin in in the lateral direction infinitesimal thin um, uh, resistors of a uh, resistor resistance of a radial uh, the quarter ring um, so to, to do this of course we will take a uh, uh, very small to b where a is larger than b but uh, if you think that they are very close to each other then uh, we should be able to express this ratio a divided by b as 1 plus a minus b divided by b uh, well you can check this so the idea of doing uh, writing this ratio like this is to be able to um, express the natural logarithm ln a divided by b in terms of uh, only a and b uh, so that we can take we can uh, get an expression for the resistance only in terms of a b and uh, thickness and the rho so the natural logarithm a divided by b when a is very uh, close to b uh, is a minus b divided by b and we 
to get this uh, result, we have used the uh, approximation formula for the natural logarithm, and we have the natural logarithm of an expression in parentheses 1 plus x, where x is a very small number, and this applies to, uh, in, in, to our case, because a is very close to b, and this is nothing but uh, uh, x, so we can replace the natural logarithm a divided by b by a minus b divided by b, so we can express the um, the resistance of this quarter one of these quarter rings then we have this expression uh, rho 2 pi b divided by 4 which is the one quarter of the circumference of this ring of radius r okay this is l and t times a minus b well a minus b is just this side okay and t is the thickness so this is just nothing but the uh, uh, cross section area of this uh, ring. So we cover, we uh, uh, verify that in fact uh, this uh, result is uh, correct. And, and by doing this approximation, we just recovered the resistance of this infinitesimally thin quarter uh, ring.